today on CyberLife. Uh, this is one of a pair. There are two of them. Uh, they're He's of rich, them. real rich. And, and you know what? He enjoys every minute of it. We hang out with multi-billionaire computer oracle, Larry Ellison. Tired of boring award shows? Maybe you'd feel differently if you went to one. Well, now you can, online. We have a very special camera, which um, takes photos onto a disc so that live images appear to the internet and people around the world. These cool images weren't made in a high-priced graphics house. They were done in a home computer by some very young artists. We'll show you how they did it. Where do old computers go to die? If they're lucky, they get recycled. The Computer Recycling Center is set up so that we can get the unused corporate computers into the hands of our kids to have them become computer literate. And that's just good business. Viva Las Vegas! Sin City comes to life. Neon, glitter, and no gamble. We're building the technology right now that will really take the whole 3D concept and expand it to what it's going to become in the future. You want to buy some computer hardware, and all of these cool catalogs have arrived at your door. We'll help you answer the question, retail or mail order? Today on CyberLife. Welcome to CyberLife. I'm Chris Eddy. And I'm Gina Smith. Well, if your mom is like my mom, she's always telling you not to worry about Mother's Day. But then if you forget to send a card or you forget to call her, it is guilt forever. Well, thanks to two recently developed products, amnesia-prone sons and daughters can show how much they care about Mommy Dearest before it's too late. Well, Mother's Day is here. Do you know where your cards are? We do. They're on web pages created by the Outpost Network. At DearMom.com, you can choose from two dozen Mother's Day cards. Choose from three canned quotations and poems or compose a message of your own. Perhaps a classic phrase like, I love you, or my favorite, send more money. They'll print your message on the card you choose. Then send it using regular U.S. snail mail, all for about four bucks. You may have missed the boat this year, but you'll be way ahead for next year. Or you can show your devotion and freak her out at the same time with a temporary mom tattoo. There's even a rate a mom poll where you can vote for your favorite mom of all time, besides your own, of course, with candidates ranging from Mother Teresa to Courtney Love. Speaking of love, you can express this sentiment to new moms as well with these other cards from Outpost. Although this is a great convenience, it's only good for those who have net access. If you're not online, but you do have a CD-ROM drive, you also can make your own cards for mom with a product called Hallmark Connections Card Studio. My advice? Make them fast. Hallmark was around decades before cyberspace, and now they've finally brought their brand name to computer users. Their new CD lets you design and print customized cards for many occasions via PC and printer. You can choose from hundreds of images created by Hallmark artists, and over a thousand messages written by Hallmark writers. Novices can create cards with point and click ease. Hey, whatever happened to originality? You buy it, of course. But if you do want to create original pictures, there are drawing and layout tools for more experienced cyber artists. There's also an event minder calendar to remind you where holidays are falling this year. Besides the CD-ROM, Card Studio comes with samples of paper and envelopes, which you can order more of. For more moolah, of course. Isn't that original? So you've just dropped a bundle to replace your computer, but what happens to the old one after you unpack the new one? Well, you could turn it into a planter box, a fish tank, or in the case of my current lemon, I think I'd throw it off a tall building. No, Chris, don't toss it. You can recycle it. In America, we trash about a million computers a month. That's about 50 million pounds of hardware and software going into the landfills. The Computer Recycling Center is set up to act as a conduit between corporations and schools so that we can get the unused corporate computers into the hands of our kids to have them become computer literate. The Computer Recycling Center is a nonprofit operation based just outside of Oakland, California. The center overhauls donated equipment, then sells it at cost to schools and individual students. An average computer system, including a monitor and printer, can go for about $300. Not bad. These are older computers, but still very useful, that we're putting into the schools. And we can do this in every major city in the country. All of our kids can get on the internet. 
All of our kids can have word processing, and it costs very little. Donations include everything from cables and floppy disks to books and user manuals. The center is staffed by volunteers, ranging from Silicon Valley retirees to vocational students anxious to get hands-on experience. What we want to do is recreate the vocational training programs where students will come out of school being able to actually get a job. Recently, the center became involved with the city of Oakland's Bite the Bullet, a unique anti-violence program where citizens can trade in their guns for computers. The response was overwhelming. We were going to do it at 9 a.m. People started showing up at 2 a.m. By the time we started to open the gates at 8.15, we had 500 people in line, each one with a gun. With current plans to take the program nationwide, Mark Haas is confident that soon there will be computer recycling centers in every major city in the U.S. He hopes that anyone with an unwanted computer will practice the new three R's. Reduce, reuse, and recycle. So you're buying your first computer, or maybe it's your second or third computer. Either way, there comes a point in every buyer's life when the big question comes. Should I buy retail or mail order? Well, there's no one right answer. Retail shopping can be very convenient. You can physically check out the wares, choose among different models, maybe even drive back over later for service. But mail order can save you a few hundred bucks or more, and the larger companies have reliable tech support. Plus, you get door-to-door -door service, pickup, and delivery. Not a bad deal if you hate driving yourself. Now, here's some tips. Shop in a store if it's your first time. But do your homework first. Get the facts about the products you want. Salespeople aren't always as knowledgeable as you think. And bring a savvy friend. If you're an experienced user, go the mail order route. Like my Uncle Charlie said, don't pay retail. There are lots of companies out there, so check the Better Business Bureau records and the Computer Magazine reviews. Look for the best service and support deal. That means 24 hours and 7 days a week of toll-free or fax-back service. Our final suggestion, stay away from swap meets and huge department stores. Right, unless you're an expert, because you could really get burned. When we come back, think you're a pinball wizard? Then try your luck on this new game. And hold on to your quarter. And we'll look at the future of animation with the latest technology and the newest artists. Not too long ago, aspiring young filmmakers honed their skills with Backyard Super 8 Productions. Then home video came along and gave these mini mogul wannabes another way to make a movie. Well, microprocessors have picked up where video left off. And the budding Spielbergs of tomorrow, well, they're trading their viewfinders for keyboards. This year, the Santa Barbara Film Festival and Metatool Software sponsored the Teen Digital Movie Making Competition. 45 high school students were all given access to the same computer file of random film clips, along with 21 hours of instruction in digital imaging. The short films that these young minds produced were created with digital special effects software, provided in part by contest producer and Metatool's founder, Kai Krauss. If you empower them to do the work, suddenly they see their eyes light up and it gets the adrenaline running and they, they do some really amazing work. Contest highlights included entries that ranged from the whimsical, like Dustin Martin and Andrew Hager's 50s sci-fi spoof. And the army was dispatched. These creatures were destroyed. Two more serious subjects, like those explored in Jared Seltzer and Jim Van Blericum's haunting submission. and the hopeful theme of peace by Eric Kalpikoff and Kyle Ross. But the top prizes, two new Macintosh computers and Metatool software, went to Courtney Wilson and Alan Miller for their graphically rich digital essay, History is Our Lifeline. They gave us a whole bunch of really old black and white footage that we pulled stuff bits and pieces from everywhere and put it all together and created a one-minute film about history and how we should learn from our past to help us in the future.
start with a theme, a title, and then we follow it all the way through. And we didn't, we didn't really deviate from the topic. Each scene behind the text kind of parallels what we're trying to say at that second. It's not random, and, and it's there for a reason. And, and we, put it, we put our effects in um, to, to achieve an effect to the viewer. And what an effect it had. You remember when pinball was all the rage? Well, now it's back and on your computer, and there's plenty of games to choose from. <laughs> First, my favorite, hands down, it's called Hyper 3D Pinball. Check out these graphics. You can really see the ball motion and play action, just like on an old arcade machine. And there are six different tables to choose from. You control the flippers with the left and right shift keys on your keyboard and play just like the good old days. A close second is 3D Ultra Pinball. It comes with strategy tips, a pinball glossary, and three main tables. Now there are some variations. These two products, Extreme Pinball and Psycho Pinball, have a different design. These let you see a portion of the table, but you scroll up and down to follow the bouncing ball. I can do without the scrolling. It's distracting and it even makes you nauseous. Most of these games are fun, but personally, I prefer getting a little physical with my game. I'll take the old-fashioned machines any day. He's been described as a jet-setting Buddhist bachelor and has made more money in computers than anyone except Bill Gates. So who is this guy anyway? His name is Larry Ellison, and I caught up with him at his mansion in Silicon Valley. Let's meet the computer world's other mega billionaire. In the late 1970s, Larry Ellison and his Oracle Corporation burst onto the technology scene and quickly cornered the industrial database software market. Soon, companies like American Airlines, AT&T, and the Ford Motor Company began to rely on his products, and the billions rolled in. This massive fortune has brought the one-time college dropout a long way from his Spartan inner-city upbringing. Did it seem like it happened overnight? I guess an overnight success is never an overnight success. Yeah, it certainly was not overnight. Uh, I th actually, I think of it less when I'm here and more when I drive up to Oracle and look at the Emerald City buildings and you know, all of those buildings filled with all of those people and wondering how we're going to manage to pay them this week. Making payroll isn't likely to be a problem if Ellison's latest venture, the $500 network computer, is successful. Drawing all of its power and software from the Internet, the NC, as it's known, is Oracle's stab at making computers accessible to all. And some say a stab at Microsoft and Bill Gates. Well, Microsoft has a monopoly on desktop computer software. And no one with a monopoly wants to, see, you know, you know, wants to lose the monopoly. I mean, that, you know, when you're second, there's only one, one company left to beat, and that's Microsoft. Ellison is confident that his vision of the future will prevail. But unlike billionaire Bill, Larry won't be planning his next move from any high-tech futuristic fortress. Instead, this samurai of Silicon Valley prefers his Japanese zen-like Xanadu. Yeah, you know, I've admired Japanese culture and art and philosophy ever since I visited there, there about 20 years ago. Uh, those are two Edo period dolls. The screen happens to be a map of Kyoto, the names of all the different temples. A full suit of armor, again, you know, several hundred years old. Oh, wow, what's this? Uh, they're temple guardians, and they're designed uh, to make sure the evil spirits and evil people don't pass through the portals of the, of the temple. The serenity of his million-dollar digs lies in stark contrast to Larry Ellison's brash business style and seems a lifetime away from his humble beginnings in the south side of Chicago. This is a koi pond. And what do you fish this one man need? You don't eat these. That's true. Uh, no, no, not, not unless the stock goes way, way down. <laughs> When we come back, Hollywood goes online. When an award show gets up close, personal, and interactive. And it's America's favorite guilty pleasure, Las Vegas. And when we come back, we'll go to virtual Vegas. How many times have you been watching some award show on television and you wanted to shout, you call that an evening gown? I know salads that are better dressed than that. Well, at this year's NAACP Image Awards, people like Chris, 
could talk back to their favorite stars in real time and at the actual event. From the outside, this year's NAACP Image Awards, honoring those who promote positive portrayals of African Americans, look very much like previous years. There was the usual glitz and the glamour to rock dead gorgeous women dressed to the nines, an endless stream of big name stars like Quincy Jones, Robert Townsend, Holly Robinson, and husband Rodney Pete. And of course, a ravenous press gobbling it all up for the public. But inside, things are different. Because this year, anyone with a PC and access to the internet had an instant backstage pass. We're looking forward to a long run. Thanks to the Image Awards chat room provided by Z Interactive. We brought CompuServe, America Online, Prodigy, and the Internet IRC together to reach over 200 countries, potentially, and allow people all around the world to plug into an event that would otherwise be pretty closed. Another person says, Ms. Kidd, I've really big, been a big fan of yours for years. How do you keep looking so young? I keep running away from men. <laughs> people can actually, for the first time ever, interview their, their favorite stars. How often would you ever get a chance to ask Whitney Houston a question? Even if someone in, their, in her hometown wouldn't get a chance to ask her a question, but think of someone in Sri Lanka who may be online and may get a question through to her. I think that's pretty significant. My, well, I'm supposed to be doing something this summer, but I can't say what it is because it hasn't been finalized. <laughs> but the technological breakthroughs at this year's Image Awards didn't stop with the chat room. Wow, that dress is nice! <laughs> One really exciting aspect about tonight's online event is that we're doing what we call digital photos. We're, we have a very special camera which um, takes photos, but not to regular film. It actually takes them onto a disk. The disk is uploaded to the computer so that live images appear to the internet and people around the world in a matter of minutes. Sure, sure. So. E. David Ellington of Net Noir feels that this year's Image Awards online success will set the standards for other award shows in the future. We're in the beginning stages, so it's kind of rough. We're still text-based. I bet in a year from now we'll probably be using um, audio where people will be able to actually hear the voices of the celebrities and then vice versa. We'll be able to take questions online. Again, another step closer to true interactivity. And that's what makes this medium different and that's what we're excited about. <laughs> Las Vegas, a desert oasis for lovers of chance, a neon mecca where kitsch is cool and the action is hot. But now lounge lizards and high rollers need only trek as far as their PC to tap into the glitzy gambling capital. Except, of course, you can't gamble. What's the fun in that? <laughs> Let's see. Virtual Vegas is a series of CD-ROMs developed by Electromedia of Venice, California. When you say Virtual Vegas, to the average person on the street, they go, <gasps> and they get a picture in their mind, and they go, wow, okay, that could be kind of interesting. What can you do there? Well, you can come in and you can play games in virtual reality environments. You can see entertainment that you can't find anywhere else. All of a sudden, people start to get very excited. Starting out small, huh? The first release, Turbo Blackjack, is an interactive game where players challenge a sexy cyber dealer I knew you had it in there. and bet credits against the house. Well, I've got a 17, dealer has a 9. I think I better stand and just pray. Uh, I'm busted. Me? I busted. Oh, too bad. And you were doing so well. And what would any trip to Vegas be without Showgirls? For intergalactic beauty. The Ms. Metaverse CD is an interactive beauty contest with contestants who run the gambit from the divine check her out. to the disgusting. The player chooses a winner based on brains, beauty, and talent. Maybe give her a 10. The latest entry into the Virtual Vegas series is the soon-to-be-released Assault Poker. Assault Poker combines poker mentality and the bluffing and the money element with the fun shoot 'em up action of a 3D game similar to Doom or something like that, only this is a real 3D fully rendered environment that you're going to be able to run around in. I gotta go! Players can choose from a cast of characters, which includes a trigger happy Harlequin and, of course, an Elvis impersonator. In addition to the CD-ROM, Virtual Vegas exists as a website on the internet. But like the real-life Vegas, you can't come empty-handed. 
To play the slots, roulette, or blackjack here, you need an account and hot Java software. Although players here do gamble, no real money changes hands. That's illegal under current laws. So instead, they earn and use credits to win prizes. Our original intent was to build Virtual Vegas on CD-ROM and have online components which link the CD-ROMs together. We're building the technology right now that will really take the whole 3D concept and expand it to what it's going to become in the future. Quite soon, you're going to be able to be in a 3D space and playing poker against someone. And as the technology gets better and better, it's going to be much more realistic. You're going to be able to pick up objects and talk to people and hand them things and pick up your chips, just like the real world. When CyberLife returns, we'll open up some fewer mail. They say, surround yourself with Earth's forms and you'll find tranquility. In the presence of power, you achieve peace of mind. Remove yourself from chaos and you'll experience rejuvenation. Hence, our newest edition, Wide Open Spaces. Introducing the longer, roomier Jaguar Vanden Plug. A 166 megahertz Intel Pentium processor. Six-speed CD-ROM. And full-motion video make the AST Advantage 800 one hot multimedia computer. Ask anyone. There it is! For the first time, one company has brought cellular, paging, emailing, and surfing the net under one roof. Or, should I say, lid. MCI One. Life just got simpler. The Discovery Channel. Beginning at 6 Mountain, 5 Pacific. Weekdays. How does it work? The popular mechanics show. NQ. Roger, we understand. Weekday Wings. The Discovery Channel. Beyond 2000. Cyber Life. Going live. Cut and rolling. Next step. Explore your world. Weekdays. On the Discovery Channel. feedback on our stories? Well, if you do, we've set up a way for you to share those ideas with us. If you have a modem and can access the World Wide Web, you can find us at Discovery Online. Just use your web browser and head to www.discovery.com. Click on On Air and you'll find us waiting. Or if you'd like to send us some email, send it to cyberlife at discovery.com. Now, if you want to write us the old-fashioned way, use this address. We'll leave these addresses on the screen for a while so you can find a pen and paper. Once you join us, you'll find transcripts of many of our upcoming stories. We post them early so we can get your feedback before we put them on the air. Now, here is the best part, your feedback. After you read the piece, send us your comments at our address. Remember, we put up the transcript early so we can answer some of your questions in the same show where the story appears. This week, CyberLife got in the middle of a civil war, Macs versus PCs. Now, first, Kenneth Torbeck wrote us, I have to say, you push the Mac a lot. I have stock in Apple, but would not use one if you paid me. Well, it shows you, Chris, you can't please all the people all the time, all right. because AJ and Greg Neff had the opposite complaint. They wrote us, we really enjoy your show, but there's not enough about our choice computer, the Macintosh. No mention here about whether they've got any stock in Apple or not. But you know what? We can't win. Maybe we should just feature Amigas. And finally, John Selvia wrote, Please consider reviewing my website on an upcoming cyber life. Say, is there a Gina Smith fan club? She's great. You know, he probably just said that because he wants us to review his website. Oh, no. <laughs> Actually, Chris, I do have a fan club. Really? Where? In Kuwait. Really? Kuwait. <laughs> I'm Gina Smith. And I'm Chris Eddy. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>